All right, let's get right into it. Today, we're tackling one of the injuries that really tests us in the OR, the comminuted distal femur fracture. We're going to focus specifically on the nuts and bolts of long bridge plating, the biomechanics, the best practices, and how to really nail that biological fixation we're all aiming for. You know, there's a reason these fractures are such a clinical headache. For a long time, the approach was all about rigid buttressing, but we've all seen cases where that just falls short. The key insight, really, is a shift in our whole mindset. The goal is an absolute, unyielding rigidity. It's about creating a more biological and elastic fixation strategy that actually encourages the bone to heal. Okay, so how do we solve this fixation puzzle? Well, it really all boils down to one foundational concept, the long plate principle. This is the bedrock. It's how we achieve successful elastic fixation in this incredibly challenging area. If you take only one thing away today, make it this. This is the golden principle. You have to use a long plate. How long? The rule is at least three times the length of the fracture zone. Another great way to think about it is eight to 10 times the diameter of the bone. And let's be clear, this isn't just a recommendation. It's a biomechanical necessity. So what does that look like in practice when you're actually selecting your implant? It means the plate you choose should span 75 to 90% of the entire length of the femur. For most of these nasty culminated fractures, you should be reaching for 12, 14, or even a 16 hole plate. The days of trying to fix these with a short six or eight hole plate are, or at least should be, long gone. So why are we so adamant about plate length? Why is it non-negotiable? Well, the physics of fixation give us a very, very clear answer. And it explains exactly why short plates aren't just a suboptimal choice. They are actually biomechanically dangerous. This slide just lays it out perfectly. On the left, with a short plate, you create this incredibly stiff construct that concentrates a massive amount of stress right at the ends of the plate. And that just chokes off callus formation. Now look at the long plate on the right. It distributes that stress over a much wider area. This creates a less stiff, more elastic construct, which is exactly what you want. It allows for that controlled micromotion that's absolutely essential for robust secondary bone healing. And the clinical consequences of getting this wrong, they're severe. They're the complications that keep us up at night. As you can see here, that high stress concentration you get with short plates leads directly to a cascade of failure. You see fatigue at the end screws, hardware failure, even catastrophic plate breakage. And ultimately, the one outcome we're all trying to avoid, non union Okay, so if the long plate is the what, then the concept of working length is the how. This is the crucial AO principle that lets us actually harness the benefits of that long plate to create a controlled biological healing environment. Let's be really precise about this definition. The working length is the empty, unscrewed portion of the plate right over the fracture itself. It's the distance from the closest screw in the distal fragment to the closest screw in the proximal fragment. And here's the critical principle. The longer you make that working length, the more flexible and elastic your entire construct becomes. It essentially turns the plate into a long leaf spring, shielding the fracture while still allowing that productive micromotion. So here's how you put it into practice. First, you select that long pleat we talked about. Then, and this is the key step, you intentionally leave three to four screw holes completely empty over the comminuted area to create that nice, long working length. Finally, you get your stable fixation by placing three to four solid bicortical screws in the distal block and another three to four up in the proximal diaphyseal segment. Remember that formula? Long plate, sparse screws over the fracture. That's the recipe for biological fixation. Okay, let's put it all together now. We're gonna synthesize all these principles, the long plate, the biomechanics of stress, the concept of working length, and create a final data-driven blueprint for the ideal fixation construct. Think of this table as your pre-operative checklist. As you're templating, run through these parameters. Is my plate length at least three times the fracture zone? Am I achieving that 75 to 90% femur coverage? Have I planned for three to four good bicortical screws in each main fragment? Is my plate span ratio going to be greater than 10? And finally, have I maximized the working length? If you can check off all these boxes, you are giving your patient the absolute best chance for a successful outcome. So I'll leave you with a question for reflection. Think back to your last comminuted distal femur case, the one that's popping into your head right now. Based on these biomechanical principles we just discussed, was your plate long enough? It's a critical question to ask ourselves, and the answer could change the outcome for your very next patient. Thanks for joining me for this explainer.